Hey guys, Ralph here. Welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this magnificent Monday here in Connecticut. And I'm not just saying that because I have double C's. It is gorgeous. It's going to be up in the 70s today. I mean, life's good, man. Life's good. Anyway, I hope you had a good weekend. I did. And uh, you saw the thumbnail. Horse Fishers Hot Canary. It's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Anyway, let me honk and we'll get to it. Rips, rips galore, and uh, taking some liberties with Arbin, character 630 number two. Anyway, yeah, I've talked about this before, and I'm not sure if I like Maurice's Hot Canary best, but, um, <laughs> I mean, G's above double C, reeks of our Johnny Madrid talk and all this sort of stuff. Guys, check out, I'm, I'm going to put the link down below, and a lot of very, very cool pictures of my man, Horse Fisher. And you know the one I like the best, all right? I mean, that goes without saying. So, um, but some very, very cool pictures, and two of, the, two of them that I, well, several of them, I want you to look, guys, not a mark on his lip. And it's not like he's playing fourth trumpet in the Boston Symphony. I mean... No, we know what he's doing, was doing, night in and night out. I mean, just killing it. Not a mark on his lip anywhere, okay? Also showed a very, very great picture of his mouthpiece. Now, it was a hunting mouthpiece that went in, you know, the hunting bugle. Back in uh, that time, he wanted to be Harry James, and he wanted to get the smallest mouthpiece that he could find, because he wanted the upper register. Back there in Germany, not a lot to choose from, so he got one that, you know, the smallest one he could find, and the rest is history. But that is what the guy was playing his entire career, okay? And that proved, now Jerry had, it wasn't that mouthpiece, it could have been that mouthpiece. It was one of the same. It wasn't somebody making a, a prototype. It was, uh, it was this beta. Was it the same mouthpiece? Any of you Jerry heads out there, if you know if, that, if what he had was the actual mouthpiece. I played, tried playing one note in it, and it, just, it almost hurt my lips just to play one note. It was a very, very weird mouthpiece. There is no way this guy could have made this work without ultimate, ultimate relaxation and compression compression. But it was holding his chops in. I mean, listen to what he was doing, his articulations and all this sort of thing. But, uh, and I told you, I've told you this before, that my favorite Horse Fisher recording was a bootleg that Jerry had of him playing taps. Guys, I can't believe how beautiful it was. On that godforsaken mouthpiece, it sounded better than Phil Smith could ever sound. I mean, dark and rich I mean, it was absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. Mel Broyles used to say, Ace, taps. 
it is the hardest solo in the book. Several reasons. First of all, Ace, everybody knows it. Second of all, you're usually outside. Third of all, it's just so simple. Ace, you clam one note and you're screwed. It's not like there's a cadenza that you can, you know, end with a flourish or something to make up for that one clam. Uh, Mel used to play taps, uh, taps. Um, he used to play taps a lot at um, military funerals. He was a military man via West Point, as you know, and he used to do that a lot. Anyway, that's it. Horse Fisher, Hot Canary, and we'll get back into some spit buzzing and everything tomorrow. All right? All right, guys. Life's good. Eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all. Well.